I'm going to turn now to China's uh, relations with its three key Asian partners, uh, India, Japan, and Southeast Asia. And I wonder if you could sort of very briefly, let's start with India and uh, talk about, you know, how is it that these two countries have in general lived at peace with each other for most of the past 2000 years indeed? Uh, the scholars co collaborated, as you know, in Nalanda University, a project that you were involved with. So what, what, does, what does the history of China-India relations tell us about the future, you think? I think what it tells us is that uh, when the relationship had, was not, never based on political power or the search for power or, or, or dominance of any kind, but really based on trade, when there was trade, and on interchange of ideas, and in this case, it was a change of ideas coming from India to China. Mm. Uh, very few ideas came from China to India, as far as I know. But the Buddhism and a whole related set of ideals which are at the heart of what is the Hindu uh, spiritual tradition, when they were brought to China, the China was so taken by it that they actually looked upon India as the Western heaven. Mm. That's a Tianxia by itself. It's a heaven by itself. Mm. And all the devoted uh, Buddhists in China, and mm. we are talking about probably the large proportion of the Chinese people were Buddhists in one way or the other. Uh, in their Buddhist context, they will always recognize India as the Western heaven. Mm. And that's where wisdom came from. And Buddhism is the, manifested itself in China. And the Chinese accepted that. They reinterpreted it in some ways, but in a way we made them more comfortable, mm. but they accepted it almost wholly. And mm. so India was always a kind of mystical, wonderful place for a long mm. time. But there were no other political relationships mm. with India, because India has other concerns. India's concerns were mainly with the West. That's Their right. problems with, with, with really was Afghanistan and, the, uh, and, <laughs> and, and Persia yes. and, the, and Central Asia, the Turko-Mongol, the, Mong yes, the yes. Mongols and so on. So they nothing to do with China. And the, whatever there was to do with China was trade by sea. The, the Indians came to sea to the southern coast of China, mm. and Chinese went to India for trade in South India particularly. Mm. And that was peaceful, always peaceful. Mm. So no political relationship. They were fine for 2,000 years. Mm. Where did the political relationship come from? It came from the East India Company mm. in Bengal wanting to trade with Tibet. Mm -hmm. I mean, when uh, people at Hastings, and after that, all the way for a whole century mm. until the young husband actually sent it. They sent an army mm. to Lhasa. And that, you know, all that mm. bayonets to Lhasa is a fun, mm. fun, a famous book on that. Mm. So this was a different relationship when the, the British mm. were thinking about how Imperial India mm. could somehow have a special relationship with Tibet. Mm. And in particular, they were fearful of the Russians mm. reaching Tibet coming in from Turkestan. Mm. And the Russians had an advantage because it was much easier mm. to get from Turkey, uh, Turkestan to mm. the Tibet because there were no Himalayas. Mm. Whereas the Himalayas was a major obstacle. Yes. So they didn't want the Russians to have that advantage. Mm. And one of the most interesting results was it, the British found it to their interest, in their interest, mm. to recognize Qing sovereignty. Mm. Uh, and they used the word suzerainty. Mm. But they now agree that there's no real difference between mm. suzerainty and sovereignty. They recognized Qing suzerainty mm. over Tibet in order to keep the Russians out. Because mm. by so doing, then the Russians must deal with the Qing mm. on any matters pertaining to Tibet. Mm. And that protected Tibet from the Russians. And so the British actually supported China, Qing mm. China, where Tibet was concerned. Mm. But using this vague word suzerainty, mm. which uh, nobody was very clear about at the time. Mm. But in the meantime, of course, there were others who believed that Tibetans should have had an independent mm. existence. So there were shades of dis disagreement mm. about what that meant. But what they left behind was really a question of drawing the borders mm. between British India mm. and Qing China. Mm. And then you have the famous uh, the debates that ended up mm. with the McMahon line mm. and all that. I, the details are very complicated, but mm. the re net result was Finally, India and China had a political border problem, mm. which they never had before. Mm. And that's the source yes. of all the problems thereafter. That's, that's true. And as we know, it's, it, that border problem has become quite serious. 
But I hope that India and China will bear in mind their longer history. But this is actually the only real issue That's between right. India and China.